Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Animal Artists Collective video. The AAC is an initiative founded by Denise Soden and Jennifer Charlie to raise awareness about animal conservation through education and art. Each piece created for each AAC theme is available for purchase, with half the proceeds going to animal conservation and welfare. This month, we focused on reptiles, and I decided to do a portrait of the little reptile I know best, my pet Euromastix Cicero. There are many species of Euromastix, and quite a few of them are kept as pets. Cicero here is a Euromastix gerai, or a red Niger Euromastix, which is sometimes called the Saharan spiny tail lizard, um, but most often just referred to as a Euro or a red gerai among reptile keepers. There's a yellow morph of this species too, um, and in general both range from brown to bright yellow or bright orange red, depending on their mood, their health, and whether they're male or female. Reptiles are a bit of a weird one, and keeping one as a pet can be challenging and confusing. They don't emote the same way that mammals do, and they certainly don't like pets and cuddles the same way that mammals do. Obviously there are exceptions, like uh, very social bearded dragons or very acclimatized iguanas. Um, and people often say that Euros are quite docile and slow and chubby and can like pets, but some of them are also little little gremlins that will never like you no matter what you do. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go into the particulars of how to care for a Euro because they're all individuals and beyond the basics of their their species, which, you know, they like hot, dry climates, they're from the desert. Uh, it'll depend on what your lizard likes, how picky they are, um, how you have their enclosure set up, and also how healthy they are, too. And this can change um, over time and change with the seasons as well. Um, being as I live in a very dry climate myself, uh, classified as semi-arid, actually, um, I knew that I wouldn't have easy access to food like crickets in my town, and also knew that it would be very difficult to keep a humid enclosure. So when I was deciding what sort of animal um, to adopt, a euro seemed like the perfect choice because they're desert herbivores, and I knew that I could provide for this lizard um, within the resources that I have in my town. So he's comfortable and healthy, at least I hope so, <laughs> and he has lots of enrichment and hidey holes in his tank. He gets fresh dandelions in the summer and fresh greens year-round. Sometimes he gets bugs and um, calcium supplements too, uh, but the greens are his staple and he also gets seeds and bee pollen and little treats like that But he's generally quite picky. We've tried giving him lots of different fruits um, And some some euros like it apparently according to the internet, uh, but he just really ignored them <laughs> Really ignored them. So I don't know. He's quite the character and it's been interesting getting to know him Especially because he's a reptile and so far removed from you know a human or a cat or a dog. He likes to dig in his sand, uh, and we've actually had people recommend tile for their enclosure, but I feel like tile would be kind of plain. I mean, it keeps your lizard clean, but you know, they're, they're meant to be in nature, they're not meant to be clean. Uh, digging is a natural behavior for these lizards, they are burrowers, um, and it also helps keep his claws short, uh, and so that's good. We don't have to clip his claws or anything because he's always digging in the sand. We don't mind the extra cleanup either. He gets a bit of a sponge bath sometimes. Um, but we know he's keeping busy and that's important to us. I also live in Canada though, so Canada doesn't have a lot of reptiles. Uh, Alberta especially has very few reptiles. Um, we do get... Uh, we get horned lizards, or um, which some people sometimes call uh, spiny toads, um, but we get horned lizards, and they actually hibernate in the winter in the snow, um, just below the the, the snow. Uh, but they're very small. Um, we also we don't have any native turtles or tortoises. Um, they're all introduced, and we do get rattlesnakes, um, but only south of here. I think I live where the 
northernmost reach of a, of a rattlesnake is. So it's not really meant for reptiles, and I can see why, because the light changes so drastically. Uh, in the winter especially, we have very few daylight hours, and you can tell even like Cicero lives inside, he lives in a tank, and he has his own UV light and his own um, heat lamp, but he does get some natural light too. You can tell how the lack of natural light affects him, as well as how it affects us, you know, we're humans, we get a little moodier when we get less sunlight and stuff like that. So he sleeps more in the winter than he does in the summer, and that's fine. He takes, we call him his days off. He takes days off where he'll stay in one of his hides all day, and that's okay. He's a reptile, he can do that. Um, but yeah, it, they also will try sometimes to brumate, which is a type of hibernation, um, sort of the reptile version of hibernation. Uh, and brumation is important for their reproductive cycle, but because we only keep a single lizard um, and he, well, we don't actually know his proper sex because he, the, the place that we got him from did not have a lot of information on where he was from or what his sex was. So we're kind of waiting to, to see. He's quite orange sometimes, but quite brown other times. He's not as orange as some very flashy males we've seen, but he's also not as brown as some females we've seen. But anyway, whether he's a, a he or a she, um, we don't want him getting into a reproductive cycle really, uh, because there's there's no other lizards here for him to reproduce with. Um, so we don't want eggs, uh, and we especially don't want any of the complications that come with eggs, um, such as a calcium deficiency or um, getting egg bound or anything like that. So we make sure he doesn't brumate. Uh, we wake him up sometimes. But uh, my friend down the road has salamanders and they let them hibernate fully. So they won't see them for like two or three months in the winter. And then they come back out and they're fine. <laughs> so... You know, it just depends on the animal that you're keeping. Salamanders, of course, are, are amphibians and uh, not reptiles, but it's important to know what animal you're keeping, obviously, where they come from in the world. So for Cicero, he comes from the Sahara Desert. He's a desert lizard. He's from Africa. Um, so he needs high temperatures, um, lots of sand and digging and stuff like that. Uh, and so knowing where he comes from and knowing what he is adapted for as a species allows us to try and give him a, a good life with us. And in return, um, we don't get, you know, love and kisses and puppy kisses and stuff like that because he's a lizard, um, but we do get invaluable artistic reference. Um, we get a cool little dude who comes out and hangs out with us sometimes. Um, and we just, I don't know, we like having him around, and, uh, we took him from the pet store and, and gave him a nice little place to hang out and dig holes. <laughs> so, anyway, the portrait here, I decided to paint on some Arches watercolor paper. Most of it is painted with my Kuretake Gansai Tambi paints, so those are a Gansai watercolor, um, and I did most of the base layers in the Gansai, which you'll see here, but then the top layers I did with gouache to give more layers to the highlights especially, and more darks to the darks, because the Gansai is really nice for washes. I love what it does, um, but using it thick, um, it doesn't, it gets very shiny and sticky, so it doesn't go very dark um, if you're using it the way that it's basically intended to be used, um, which is with quite a bit of water in it. Uh, so the gouache allows me to go even darker on this portrait and get those uh, stripes around his eye, um, the nice contrast in his eye as well between the pupil and the highlight, and also the darkness around his nostril and his mouth. I think he's pretty cute. I think um, he has a very nice smile <laughs> with the scales around his mouth, um, especially compared to some other Euros that I've seen. I've, I look at a lot of pictures of, of them, like a lot of pictures, like baby ones, big fat ones. I'll look at every picture you have of, of this genus of lizard because they're so dang cute. But I think Cicero's the cutest and you can fight me about that. He also has these scales around his ears. You can see that at the back of his jaw here. 
He has a very powerful jaw um, and I'll get some highlights in at the very end that really make it stand out. But he has an incredible bite force for a lizard that's basically a herbivore. Um, so that kind of clues us in that he's eating tough material in the wild. He's got a lot of chewing to do, but also that he may have evolved from more predatory lizards who would need that bite force. And when you're watching him eat, you kind of see some of the predators still in him because he'll rip rip at the leaves. It's very sort of um, monitor lizard type looking stuff. Um, they're, they're agamids, so agama lizards. Um, but anyway, you can see a bit of the, the ancient predator <laughs> reptile in him. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, those, those big bite muscles also give him big old cheeks that are quite cute. Um, but it also makes it quite hard to get his mouth open if we ever need to give him medication, which we did have to do at one point. We had to give him some antibiotics. It's basically impossible to get his mouth open because his bite muscles are so strong. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like you can tell a lot about his his lifestyle and his species lifestyle just from his face, um, just from the way his eyes move, just from the positioning of his eyes, quite forward on his head, just from the size of, of course, his cheeks and his bite muscles. And I always think that's interesting, seeing how behavior impacts the morphology of an animal. I made sure to really punch up the orange on this uh, picture of him. We took this on a very good day when he was really fired up. So the warmer he gets and the more energetic he's feeling, the more orange he becomes actually. So he doesn't really color change for his mood precisely and he's not color changing for camouflage exactly. Um, I mean not when he gets bright orange I mean. But uh, you can tell if he's doing well or if he's feeling a little extra punchy because he'll get bright orange. Whereas when he's sleeping and his body temperature cools down, he of course being cold blooded like every reptile, uh, he'll go more grayish and brown um, and his coloration will darken and the eye spots on, on his back too will sort of fade. So it's interesting. He goes through a lot of changes throughout the year but also throughout the day and hour, hour to hour. So it's very interesting and, and I love having a little dude in the house that I can observe and um, see these sort of micro, micro facets of uh, an animal's life play out in, in a little tank near my art desk. So what you can't see here and, and what's actually really important about the Euromastix uh, group of lizards is that they have these crazy spiny tails. And Cicero is sleeping under his bridge right now, but I'll insert a clip here. Uh, and you can see his crazy tail. It's very spiky. It's not soft. Um, if you've ever touched the spines on a bearded dragon, they're quite soft. Um, not these ones. Cicero's tail is very spiky, very pokey. And uh, Euromastix uh, actually means it means scourge tail, so, you know, danger tail, weapon tail. <laughs> so it's very fitting, um, and that's that's his main method of defense as well, is to hit you with his tail. So if he's mad, he'll hit you with his tail. Uh, and that's hilarious, and it does kind of hurt sometimes if he scratches you, um, but if you were a smaller animal or like a predatory bird, someone trying to get him, I think that would be quite a deterrent. Um, so that's where they get their name from, and that's their main thing of defense so he he doesn't bite i'm sure other euros have a personnel i i'm sure other euros have a personality um that's more conducive to biting but cicero's never bit anybody not even the vet so he just uses his tail <laughs> sometimes he can be quite um i don't know ornery <laughs> uncooperative uh, he's not really a fan of being handled, but we do handle him on occasion um, and we're always quite nice to him unless he's getting in a bath. He doesn't like getting in a bath, but sometimes it's necessary just to help him shed and stuff. But uh, today I actually took him out of his tank and we sat on the couch while we were watching TV and he just sat on my chest, which was amazing. He was so chill. Um, he wasn't, you know, puffed up and angry. He wasn't doing his angry wiggle. Uh, he does an angry wiggle. Um, but yeah, he was just chill. He just hung out with me and that was a really nice milestone. I'm sure it's also partly a fluke. If I took him out to sit on the couch tomorrow, he probably would have very different opinions about it. Um, 
but yeah, it was just super nice. You know, it's hard to get into the mind of a reptile, and it's probably impossible. But I think we shared sort of a nice, a nice little lizard and lizard carer moment. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I'm sure he thought it was awful, but I liked it. Anyway, this portrait here will be available on my Etsy shop. If you're interested in purchasing it, and I'd love for, for someone to purchase it, of course. I'm going to scan it for myself and keep a scan. But if you want to buy this beautiful portrait of Mr. Cicero, you can check it out on my Etsy shop. And I will donate half of the proceeds to reptile conservation. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about my little dude. And make sure to check out the rest of the Animal Artist Collective videos for this month. Thanks for watching. Bye!